Joe here. Thanks for visiting Road Trip Joe. Thanks for being my patron. I am here in the Pinnacles National Park, which is Central California, about 50 miles inland from the Pacific Ocean. And I am looking for condors today. I've been here before. I think I've seen some. This time, I've got my trusty little camera, and I'm gonna zoom in on them and see what I can see. Now I'm not usually a birder, which is short for someone who does bird watching, but I have done some in the past. No, no bird book, they're a little too heavy to carry around, but I have binoculars and I do have patience. Today I'm looking for the elusive and very rare California condor. This is a very special bird because it really shouldn't be around anymore. In fact, they declared it endangered in 1967 and decided it was extinct back in the 1980s. At least that's what Wikipedia says. Extinct is like zero, right? But the California condor had been pretty much wiped out back in the 1980s, so they declared it extinct. They got wiped out through hunting, loss of habitat, and lead shot used in guns. If they eat something dead that was shot with lead, then they get sick and die, just like we do. And even though they were declared extinct, they managed to round up 22 of the ones that were left, took them to the San Diego Zoo, and started a breeding program. After a few years and some experimenting with the South American condor, which is similar but a little larger, they introduced them to the wild when their numbers got big enough. They put them in Arizona, Southern Utah, and right here in the Pinnacles National Park in California. And recently they introduced them to Baja, California. Today there are almost 500 of these enormous birds in existence. Not all of them have been put back in the wild because they still have the breeding program going on, but they've done a pretty good job repopulating the species and placing them in places like the Pinnacles. It took some money, of course, $35 million, which was the most expensive program undertaken by repopulating a species. And it runs about $2 million a year to keep the program running. But so far, so good. And since we were the ones who almost wiped them out, it was really the right thing to do, I think. 99% of all plants and animals go extinct at one point or another, by the way, and that probably includes us, so maybe we'll get some brownie points for this when our time comes. But in this case, it just wasn't the condor's time. Now the chances of me actually seeing one of these birds is pretty slim. Condors are huge birds with 10-foot wingspans, and they fly really high, 15,000 feet high in the air. And they have been clocked going 55 miles an hour which is pretty fast, so you better be good with those binoculars. Condors can weigh over 20 pounds and are one of the world's longest living birds, sometimes reaching the ripe old age of 60. Like most buzzards and vultures, they look for and eat carrion. Carrion, for those who don't know, is dead animal carcasses. That's roadkill for you folks in Arkansas. It's been raining here the last few days, so they haven't gotten out to fly much, so maybe they're hungry and we'll spot one or two. I have to be careful in my observations though because there is another vulture in this park, the turkey vulture, and they look very similar to the condor. Turkey vultures have about a 7 foot wingspan or so, and their silver patterns under their wings are similar, but slightly different. The condor has a triangle pattern in its silver feathers, while the turkey vulture has more of its underside covered with the silver. And there are thousands of turkey vultures in the sky. Nobody wanted to wipe them out for some reason. One night here at the park, I counted almost a hundred of them roosting in a tree I was camping by. Eating lead shot doesn't seem to bother turkey vultures. Something else that was killing the condors was electrical wires. So as part of their breeding program, they taught the condors how to avoid electrical wires. Not sure how they did it, but that's a pretty good trick. Besides being a release point for condors, Pinnacles is also our newest national park. There's an east side, which is where most of the campers go, like me, and it's only accessible traveling down Highway 25. And the west side is only accessible coming in from Highway 101. There are no roads between the two sides, and while it's not that remote, you really have to want to come here. The roads are both narrow and windy. But I like it here, and it's one of the few places you can see condors in the wild, and it's not too crowded. 
Pinnacles also has some very neat rock formations and was part of an ancient volcanic field millions of years ago. In fact, a third of the field lies 195 miles to the southeast due to the movement of the San Andreas Fault, which lies just east of the park. Pinnacles was declared a monument back in 1908, designated a national park in 2013, and contains 26,000 acres, much of which is designated wilderness. And there are lots of California critters here. Many different species of bats live here. The big-eared bat is just one of them, and they live in numerous caves around the Pinnacles rock formations. They also have the red-legged frog, which is the largest native frog in the western United States. Maybe we'll see one of those. And there are 400 species of bees. Yes, Pinnacles protects the largest diversity of bees in one single place in North America. Pinnacles also has lots and lots of different flowers that bloom in the spring and other different kinds of vegetation. Not sure what that is, but it looks very nice. In hiking, Pinnacles has some really great hiking. And of course, if you're a rock climber, it's not a bad place to visit. Although they try to discourage rock climbers unless you're really good because the rock here is rather unstable and it can be a long way down. Rock climbing is like jumping out of a plane, isn't it? I'll stick with hiking. So I haven't seen a condor yet, but I know they are here. Let's see what's flying out there, shall we? And I've made it to the observation deck. And I've seen one bird flying, and I don't know what it is because it's so far away. But I'm going to walk down here, take a look around. Gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful. So let's see what we can see. From here, we're going to be very patient. I brought some food with me. I'm going to put my jacket back on here in a minute because it's a little chilly up here. I had to look real quick with my binoculars, but I saw right up there two condors. There, they went down. <laughs> they went down on the other side of the of the rocks. But uh, I got to get them with my I got to get them with my big camera. Otherwise, you won't believe me. I can't get it with this thing. They're up there. I just saw one. Oh, and I spotted them. And it was a condor. Worth a long way off, though. Maybe I'll get a little closer. He's on the other side of that mountain looking for condors. I think I've seen a couple back over there on the other side of that little mountain. But I haven't seen any on this side. And that's really, this is the observation deck here looks out this way not that way man bird watching is not easy you gotta have patience <sighs> all right I've been sitting here a while <laughs> I haven't seen any condors yet I'm not gonna give up got my little camera it's all ready just in case I catch one right over that bridge over there I'm not giving up yet I want to stick around just just a little while longer I've been up here a while. I've seen a couple of condors. They're just a long way off. So maybe I'll catch them in my campground tonight. Huh? I think I'm going to head back down there. Beautiful up here. Beautiful. It gets chilly though. It gets chilly. Yeah. Oh, hey. I uh, did my birding for the day. I'll probably do some more. Anyways, I was walking down the uh, trail. And I ran across this tree right here. There's actually, there's a few of them. <clears throat> and they have purple bark. Now I'm not a horticulturist or anything like that. And then obviously somebody carved their initials in there. That's not really a good thing to do. But I think that's a pretty cool tree. And it's growing right out of the side of the mountain. And there's the other mountain over there. Okay. I just thought you might like to see it. That's all I got.
Joe here, walking down the trail. This is what I ran into. This little guy right here. Let's see if he'll move for me. Cause I gotta walk, there he goes. I'm gonna walk past him. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Oh, he just came back out. Oh, he wanted to go the other way. There he goes. Oh, I love snakes. Don't you? Don't you love snakes? I bet you do. That was a big one. Very, very large. Sunning himself. I think I'll keep on looking down for a while. <laughs>